Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Inside ADB AI um, and our nine step blueprint on how to make good money freelance writing. My name is Rebecca Matter, and I am joined by Pam Foster. Hi, Pam. Hi. Hi, everybody. Why don't you go ahead and flip the slides forward? If you're not familiar with ADB and have no idea who we are, I'm obviously the one on the left. Um, I'm the president of ADB. I've been in this industry over 20 years now and also been, uh, I'm the president of AWAI. I uh, have been a writer and marketer in this space for a very long time. And I'm super excited to be here today because what we're talking about is really the biggest obstacle, I think, in making a living as a writer. And that's really understanding the steps to take to start making great money. So I'm super excited to be here. And again, I'm joined by Pam Foster. She's our director of training. And Pam, why don't you give a quick little background on yourself? Sure. And if you're not even familiar with AWAI, we're American Art Writers and Artists Institute. Um, our whole thing for 25 years now has been teaching people of, from all walks of life how to make a great living as a writer. So every month we do a free session like this to teach you all kinds of opportunities, how to go after them, how to land clients, all of that stuff. And um, I head up the team to create the programs that we use for training you all. So that's who I am and what we do. So And Pam has an interesting story in that she was, oh. she found us over 10 years ago as a member, as a writer, as someone in the industry wondering, can I really make a go of this? And she followed through on our resources, followed through on our advice, became successful in her own right. So when it came time to uh, build out our own training team and hire someone to help us bring in the next generation of writers, we turned to Pam because she had had so much success as a freelance writer and basically helped us create the blueprint that we're going to go through today. So let's talk about the goals for this session and what we're actually going to be covering. We have one goal, <laughs> and that is to ensure that you have a clear understanding of each step that you'll take to make good money writing so that you can follow along step by step and achieve your dream of living the writer's life. Our goal here, we're going to we're going to give you the blueprint. We're going to give you the steps you're going to take. But the real intention here is to make sure not only do you, that you know those steps, but that you feel confident that we answer those questions that you have so that when you hit that step, you feel like. I know what to expect in the step. I know what to do. I know where to go for help. We're going to show you lots of resources in the ADB world that can help you with that step so that you can move forward and do this. The end game being whatever you want, what we call the writer's life to be. The writer's life is how you define your life as a writer. So whether that is working for a company, whether that is working as a freelance writer and um, really creating the style of life that you want, if it's working 10 hours a day, if it's working 40 hours, if you're a workaholic and it's working 60 hours, whatever life it is that you want, where you want to work, when you want to work, are you a morning person or a night person? Really not having any constraints to the life that you want to live. That's the what we call the writer's life, being able to spend your time how you please, writing about the things that you're most passionate about. That's what we're going to show you today so that you can get there. So, all right, Pam, let's go ahead and jump on in for, I'm going to hand this over to Pam, but this first step to me, Pam, is probably the most important. And that's genuinely understanding this massive opportunity. And I think just after this one step, we're going to open the minds of listeners and attendees into just how big and how much demand there is for trained writers these days. Right. And I just want to preface before I jump in is that, you know, you may have already looked into ways to make a, a living as a writer and you're thinking, well, maybe I can write journal articles and, and, you know, they don't pay very much or maybe I can get my book published. And those are fine to pursue. But we're talking about business today. We're talking about helping companies send out their message so that they can sell stuff. And you're going to be a superhero when you can help them do that. So commerce anywhere where people or companies um, are exchanging money for goods and services businesses have to explain what the product or service is that they're selling how it solves a problem a need or a wish of the prospect and i'm going to show you some specific examples in a minute but this is the overall thing why it's the best solution and value companies have to really convey why choose this one over other options and then how much does it cost and how do I order it? I mean, you think those are pretty basic things, right? But you would be surprised how many companies struggle with this, struggle with the messages around this. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Okay. 
Um, now, commerce can be business to consumer, which means something you and I buy for ourselves or a family member, something like that. Uh, big range of categories here, financial products, like which bank do you choose to work with? Um, baby and new moms are, uh, you know, is an evergreen topic. There are always new moms and new babies coming along and there's a huge market for just that. Um, they're food and wine and beverages, uh, always popular anytime. Um, education, uh, that's really changed in the last year, but it's still a place where like even if there's online learning or colleges have turned to online classrooms, they need to market themselves so that uh, consumers or students in this case, choose that college or pro training program over another. Um, the RV lifestyle, camping, that's still a thing. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of people this past summer took to the RV life because they could safely travel. Um, health is another one, obviously, from over-the-counter medications to anything related to alternative health. Retail, you know, buying things on Amazon or little boutique online shops, just huge. Sports is a personal consumer thing. Auto, you know, buy your car. Um, like some people like to uh, update their car, you know, what do they call it? I, I, I can't remember. <laughs> and then music, of course, music, aren't we all um, consumers of music? So that's just the consumer side. And then this is a side you may not be aware of, but business to business, that is where companies are selling products and services to other companies so they can operate. So it could be anything from software, like every company in the world has to use software now to run their business, right? Uh, manufacturing is a whole world of creating manufacturing products and parts for products. Like just think of a washing machine, how many pieces and parts are in a washing machine that make up a total washing machine. Every piece or part is developed by a manufacturer. That's B2B. Um, store displays for retailers, customer service uh, um, groups, you know, like you can hire a group to be your customer service team. Online meetings, look at this year, Zoom and other platforms, everything's moved online. That's B2B. Businesses get to train their internal teams or train people like you guys, um, but they need a platform to do that. Shipping, training, safety, safety equipment, safety uh, practices. Construction is huge in the B2B world, like commercial buildings and commercial services like HVAC and um, cleaning, anything like that. And then HR, human resources services, which is about um, recruiting and training employees. That's all B2B. And, and these then, are just a few examples, Pam, of like thousands and thousands of industries, right? Just to illustrate the two different sides. Right, yeah. So in, in the, like, for example, um, Safety training could be for all kinds of things, for drivers, your fleet drivers who do delivery, your floor, your production floor in a plant, um, consumer safety that uh, companies have to abide by when they're creating products. That, that alone is a big category. So all of these categories have subcategories too, which is fun. And then sometimes it can be both B2B and B2C. I have a few examples here, fish tanks, coolers, safety gates. Um, gym equipment here is like you have your own Peloton or whatever you have in your home, but look at this picture here of a gym that also has gym equipment, a whole room full of it. So that's, that's a category where a company might be marketing to both consumers and to other businesses. A lot to talk about here. Commerce is everywhere. It's regional, in your town, it's national, it's online, it's global. Um, so as you start to think about, well, who can I write for? Just know that every niche, every industry, every market has tons of opportunity for you because of all of this marketing that has to go on. Now, every company on the planet needs marketing to sell. Otherwise, how do they stay open? They have to tell people what they offer. They have to um, reach out through email and e-newsletters. They have to offer coupons or um, show demo videos on YouTube to win people over and then do webinars like this so we can bring you in and help you understand what's going on. I mean, we're, we're a company too that needs to communicate and market every day. So what does this mean for you? All of this selling, all of these messages on every platform I just mentioned, email, websites, on and on, and Rebecca's gonna go over that in a minute, 
it all takes copywriting. It all takes professional writing skills that understand how to talk to consumers and business to business buying decision makers. Um, so that's where we can have oodles of opportunity and it's it's kind of mind blowing, it's endless. But copywriting, if you're not sure uh, uh, what it is, it's really persuasive business writing with the intent of driving an action. And it could be a sales page for a product where you buy now, or it could be something like content related, such as a blog post or a demo video on YouTube, where you're building awareness and interest that then might lead to a purchase eventually. So it's a huge, huge field. And I don't think there's ever been a time that I know of in my 800 years here in the world. Um, the opportunity has never, ever been bigger because there's so many channels that marketers need to use to get that message out. So let's look, just look at a simple example in the business to consumer world. And it might be a company, uh, a consumer who's looking for a camping tent. So what they likely might do is go onto Google and type in camping tent or best camping tent or six person camping tent. They'll search online. They'll see results like this where you can look at um, options to buy or start looking at reviews, start looking at ads, and then you might click on one that really interests you. And then you read on the website, what is Camping Tent all about? Um, you can compare camping tents, like which ones can really withstand heart, you know, weather, or uh, which ones really are comfortable. And then um, find a coupon. You might find a coupon online. And then you finally choose a tent and you place the order. And that whole sequence takes copywriting to guide the buyer through with their credit card. How do I do this? That's consumer. In the B2B world, let's say that you are a manager or an operations manager, or an office manager of a small company, and you want to look for an easy payroll system. So you're going to go online again. That's very typical, right? Or on your phone even. And uh, you'll search for, I put in here, best payroll service for medium business. That was my Google phrase to search. And what comes up are ads, uh, reviews. Um, sometimes there are these websites called 10 best and they kind of list what all the options are and do pros and cons, which is a lot of uh, really helpful because people can then weigh and compare. Again, they might watch a demo video on YouTube uh, and or download a free guide. A lot of B2B companies use free helpful guides to get traffic and awareness. And then the guide, of course, is going to shine the spotlight on that company. So a consumer, uh, a B2B buyer may go, OK, this is the one for us. Or they might get a consultation, a free one on one consultation. If it's something major like transferring all of their data to the cloud system, something like that. So every single bullet there is a different marketing channel, a different marketing piece that someone has to write. Like you're seeing all these different options here in the payroll services results. All of those had to be written. Those ads, those websites all had to be written. So one skill copywriting, believe it or not, these days equals at least 75 different projects you could potentially write. 75 different projects. It's never been like this and even more. I mean, we, we came up with the top 75, but there could be more. Um, and just to get your head around why, why this is so big now is because advertising spending just continues to grow, grow and grow. And you know, this number is kind of hard to get your brain around, but $200 billion by 2023. It, it, it just, I can't even fathom this, but the average company has allocated 62.3% of its ad budget to digital. Now digital means online. So all the things I mentioned, you know, direct mail, in-person trade shows, radio and TV aren't included that really. It's just digital, but digital is huge. Again, 75 different projects, digital. Um, predicted to grow by 2023. Uh, amazingly. And then again, every business needs copywriting to shift its messages with the times. Like the past year, a lot has shifted online to digital, like I said, and they have to keep up and, and, and do a great job of standing apart so they can compete and thrive and sometimes even survive. If they can't 
convey their value to the consumer or the buyer um, and their competition is doing a better job at that, it, they're going to struggle. So they need us copywriters more than ever to help them stand out in the marketplace. So whew, that's the opportunity. That's just a big window into what we're talking about here. You can become a writer for businesses and help them thrive and you'll be a superhero and well-paid because of it. So now I'm going to hand over the reins to Rebecca to talk about, okay, wow, out of that huge world of opportunity, what, what am I going to do with this? And just so you know, we are going to get into the specifics. We're going to talk about specific projects. We're going to talk about um, getting clients and building your business. That's coming in the later steps. But the first one is really understand that opportunity because the majority of the time that people like Pam and myself that we spend with new aspiring writers is getting them to open their eyes to the bigger opportunity. Many people have this laser focus on writing articles for magazines, publishing a book. But that is such a tiny, tiny part of this opportunity, as Pam just showed you. Dozens, over 75 different projects that any one company could ask you to write. Millions of companies, billions of dollars being spent on writers like you. This is a, a much bigger opportunity, and this is where the money is. Even if you're resisting right now, I don't want to sell, I don't want to write copy. We've got opportunities for you too. You're part of the process, and we're going to talk about that. But that's where the money is, because without you, without your writing, businesses cease to exist. They cannot sell their products. So even if you resist selling, they have to sell. Otherwise, they don't make any money and they can't afford their employees or the rest of their infrastructure or things like that. Writers have this amazing superpower. And that's what you need to recognize is that you have this talent. You enjoy writing. That's one thing we can't teach anybody is pure enjoyment of writing. What we can teach you, though, is how to make money from it. So that first step was very important that you understand that you are part of this massive commerce machine. And without writers, the machine just doesn't work. So understanding your value is an important part of this because when talking to clients, you need to understand just how valuable you are. Even when you're just starting out, you're not some, you're not asking for a favor or anything like that. And we're even going to get into some of those strategies later on. You provide great value like any other professional service provider and companies know that value it and respect it. And you need to, you need to as well, which is a perfect transition into money. <laughs> right. One of the things you're going to hear us talk about a lot at AWI is money because that is something you need to get comfortable with. You are starting a writing business. You're, you want to make a living at this. If you found AWI, we're guessing it's not because you want to do this as a hobby, right? We help writers make money from their writing and that's what this is all about. So step one in that, how do you make money? The first thing is to determine what your money goal is because based on that goal, that's going to give us a little bit of intel that we need to help make decisions on what your next steps might be. So the first thing when you're determining this money goal is really thinking about why are you here? And it can change. It can start one way. And then as you dip your toe in and start feeling comfortable, it could expand and get bigger. But for today, one of your assignments, when you walk away from this, I want you to answer this question. Are you here because you're looking for just extra cash, mad money on the side so that you have the flexibility to do what you want to do, buy what you want to buy, not have this 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 weighing of budget and things like that on your mind are you looking to supplement your income are you looking you know, you, you have a full-time job you're responsible for your household and you could just use an extra five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars a month what, what what would that mean for your life is that what you're looking for that steady consistent supplemental income month after month that you can count on are you looking to replace your income with a new career that's a much bigger conversation and we're gonna have that one in a second, but that's a different mindset than someone who's just looking to make a little extra cash. And remember, you might start extra cash and transition into, well, heck, I'm making this much money working five hours a week on my writing. What if I worked all 40, right? That you don't have to jump in full, full into the, the change up your career. You could just step forward and see, do I like this? Does this feel good? Is, is it coming easy for me? If yes, maybe this is what I wanna do full time. So this, this conversation could evolve. But your choice, whether it's extra supplemental or replacing your current, is going to kind of change the path that you're going to take to get to your writer's life. So let's look at those three individually. The first one, if you're looking for just extra cash here and there, again, you're just looking for extra money that you have a wedding coming up and you like to 
not have to think about all of the, the budget constraints or a trip, hopefully, <laughs> one day you'll have planned once again soon, or just something you've had your eye on, things that happen, right? Your car breaks down, ugh, you got a rock in your windshield, ah, those little expenses that are so annoying. Wouldn't it be nice just to have some extra money to throw at it and not have to worry about it? So for you, it might not be a big commitment. You might just be looking for what we call one-time pickup projects. So an article here or there, something called a site audit. Um, the pricing guide that, or the, the, the list of projects Pam talked about, the 75, we're gonna get into some of these. There is a full report on our website. Uh, it's our 2021 pricing guide. It has the updated list of product projects and prices. Um, and we go into any of these things on our website. If you see a phrase or a word or a project in this presentation where you're like, what the heck is a site on it? That sounds cool. Just go to our website and type it in the search bar. Our website is awai.com. You go to the search bar, type the phrase in, and you will find great content, free content on every single thing that we cover here. Put the word site audit in and you will find exactly what a site audit is, how much it costs, what the project looks like, what you can expect when working with clients. So know that that's all on our website. But these are one-time pickup projects. Basically, the client hires you to do the work, you submit it, you collect your fee, and you move on and decide whether or not you might accept another project like that or whether you're done and just kind of want to go on to the next thing. So that's extra cash. The next one is supplementing your income. I talked about this, additional money on top of your job, but you're looking for reliability here. You're looking for predictable income, consistency, just like you would with a full-time paycheck. So things like, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about things like retainer deals. So that's a client pays you the same amount of money every single month for the same project output. So blogging, it might be, I want you as the client to write four blog posts for me a month. In exchange, I'm gonna pay you $800 and I'm gonna expect four blog posts and you're gonna expect $800. That is a retainer, it's that predictable income. Newsletters are a fantastic opportunity as well. Uh, once they start, this is what I love about newsletters, is once a client or a company starts sending a newsletter, they can't stop, right? Their people are expecting to get this. That's how they keep their prospects warmed up and their buyers engaged and continuing to do business. So newsletters are great because they have to keep going. It's a great retainer deal. And then social media management, we're on Facebook right now, right? Anybody pays multiple moderators to be in our communities, having conversations and learning from our members and, and figuring out new content to write to answer the problems and questions that our members are having. Every company needs that as well. Companies who are not on social media these days, it's such a missed opportunity for them because that's where their prospects are. That's where they're having conversations. The amount of research done on social media, I don't have the stat in front of me, but it's crazy how social media impacts the buying decision, how much research people do on social media these days. Any client who's not engaged, talking to their prospects, talking to their customers, having conversations and providing relevant content to move them forward is just missing a huge revenue stream directly into their business. So those are predictable income streams that can supplement your income. And then finally, if you're looking to replace your full-time job and starting a new career, this means, you know, I want this. If you are at a point now or eventually get to a point where you say, I wanna be a copywriter, I want to make copywriter money, which is really as much as you want to make, but I want that, then you're gonna be, you're, you're willing to invest in your time and your training and really creating this business for yourself. A copywriter is no different than any other professional service provider, like a CPA, like a lawyer, like anything else that a company needs to function, only we contribute directly to the bottom line. So from a value standpoint, not only some professional service providers get stuff done that has to be done, we provide value. We actually can increase the bottom line of a company with the, the service that we provide. That is a big deal, right? This is a big thing that you're, potentially opening yourself up to. So if you decide to make it a career, I encourage you to think of it like that, to think of it like I'm going to law school, I'm becoming a chiropractor, I'm becoming a dentist or whatever other professional service provider and invest the time in yourself. The cool thing about copywriting though, which we're gonna look at is you can make money very quickly. You don't have to wait until you get your dental certification to become a working practicing copywriter, right? Or a working practicing dentist in that case. You can start making money quickly just by getting a few basics under your belt. So that's the only difference when it comes to a copywriting career. Yes, you are going to have to invest in learning and building your skills to get better to make the salaries that, you know, the six figure salaries that the best copywriters make, but it's worth it. And you're going to start getting paid from day from early on 
So you don't have that oh, two years from now, I'll finally start making money. No, you can start making money next month if you want to as a writer. And then from there, build on, build on and grow and grow and grow that income to replace the career that you have right now. And hopefully much more so. So with that, deciding how much you need to earn. This is another homework assignment for you. If you're going to do this as a career, this is what I want you to answer, to think about these questions. First of all, how much money are you making right now? Write it down. This is what you currently live on, right? $75,000, $40,000, whatever it is, write it on the paper. That's how I live my life with this current salary that I'm making. But then I want you to answer the question, how much money do you need to make? Oftentimes that number is lower. If you really want this and you're thinking, okay, when is it safe for me to make that jump? Knowing I have a mortgage, I might have a car payment, I might have credit card bills, I might have student loans. What are the expenses that you actually have to cover? Because if you can make just that from your writing, then transitioning is much easier, right? If you only, let's say you're making 75, but you really only need 50, the minute you hit 50 on your side gig, you know that you could transition over and spend the rest of that time easily making up the difference for your salary and a whole lot more. So just having that number in your mind of once I hit this point to cover, I know I'm comfortable. I can pull out the rug to release the full-time job to get all that time back and invest it back into my writing business. And then finally, what other considerations do you have? Maybe you have a child who'll be going off to college in the next few years or something in front of you, retirement. Are there other considerations that you need to put into place in thinking about what that money goal is? Once you have that money goal, and I don't want you to think about the most money you wanna make. This is just your next step to leave your full-time job to make this your career. Write that number down, stick it on the wall, because then it's that's our goal, that's our first goal. Now, is it our only goal? No. We're gonna have goals all the way along. We're gonna have goals going up to that goal. We're gonna have goals after that goal. We're gonna be making more money than that goal is in the future. But why put something out there that we don't really have to get to in order to feel successful, right? We wanna get that first, first big mile marker there. And then we're actually gonna set some other goals too. We're gonna to set goals like our first paying assignment, our first thousand dollars, our first $10,000, the steps that help us move forward to that bigger goal. So if you just do this, and again, write that number, stick it on the wall where you can see it every day, this will help you really focus in on the opportunities that you're going to choose to create. Because as, as Pam said, there's 75 different project types, all these companies and all these industries, you're going to decide, it's like a Chinese menu, to make the perfect tasting, the perfect dim sum. You're gonna pick a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this, and your business is gonna look different than everybody else's but it's gonna be your business and it's gonna fit the needs that you have, both financially as well as personally, what you wanna write and the lifestyle that you want to live. So we've talked about money. Again, write it down. This is another, um, once you have that, I talked about having those mini goals and how you're gonna get there. We have another webinar like this one called uh, An Insight of Bias on Creating a Roadmap. And basically once you have that destination, we will help you create that step-by-step -step roadmap so that you don't get distracted and that you make consistent forward progress. It's a free webinar like this one, and these links will be available in the recording. Uh, otherwise, you can go to our website and just type in Inside AWI, and you'll find this one on the landing page. Remember, you can always change your mind. That's a big one in all of this. You're not locking in saying, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Here's all my money, I'm committed. It's not like that. You can literally change as you go and you're moving down this direction and you might decide, I don't like this choice. I want to go a different direction. Well, that's okay. Cause you've already made so much forward progress. You can change. And that's going to be the case with money. It's going to be the change, the case with clients, projects. Maybe you try a project. You don't like that project. You go a different direction, but all the time, just by doing you're gaining experience. So it's such a flexible opportunity that you'll be able to modify it as you go. And once you have this roadmap in place, you'll be able to change the roadmap as well. So now we know how much money we're making. The next step is to actually explore the options. So I know, is it extra cash? I'm looking for one-off projects. Is it supplemental? I'm looking for more consistent revenue income every month, or I'm looking for a career that I need to replace my current income or the income that I had if, if you're in between jobs. So let's look at some of the options. This is one of my favorite things. And I hope that everybody takes this later on from the presentation, prints it out, and keeps it by their desk because this shows a lot of what the opportunity is. 
Um, this is from our core program. Our foundation program at ADBI is called the AWAI Method, and that is the program that you'll start with. If you decide to, you're in and you want to learn about copywriting and you want to learn the fundamentals to be able to take on all of these projects, you're going to start with the ADBI Method. And there's a, a link to it there, but this is from that. We cover this in detail. But the reason we're sharing it here is that there's so much copy and content that is required in the conversation from taking somebody from, I have a problem, I need a solution, all the way to, this is the solution for me and I wanna buy it. Most people, when they think about copywriting, only think about that last piece of, I have a, I want to buy the solution, you need to buy the solution, I'm selling you to buy the solution. But that's not the reality of the full picture. You can do that and you can make a lot of money writing that, but you don't have to. So if you are in this presentation thinking, I don't wanna sell, I don't wanna write copy, what I want you to come away from this is understanding that no matter what you write, social media posts, blog posts, articles, newsletters, white papers, case studies, they are somewhere in the marketing conversation that is driving a prospect to the purchase. So you might be early on, you have this problem. Let's identify some of the possible solutions. It might be in blog posts and in articles, bringing in people saying that a solution does exist. You might be in the content piece that is talking to prospects, identifying, hey, not only is there a solution to your problem, but here's a company that could actually provide that, right? We're talking about the solution, we're talking about the company, but we're not actually asking for the sale. That's tons of opportunity. You could be in the sales piece. Okay, person, you now are aware of the problem, aware of the solution, aware of the company, aware of the product. Now it's time to ask you to actually buy it. You could be part of that. Then there's another part that nobody ever thinks about in the writing world. After the sale, what happens after someone buys the product, right? How do we make sure that they're using the product, that they get to the future benefit that they were trying to get to when they bought the product in the first place? That people don't get excited and buy a workout series or, a, or an eating plan, right? They buy the future, they buy the benefit of them feeling confident, dropping those pounds, walking on the beach this summer in a bathing suit, feeling great about themselves. They can't get there if they don't actually follow the meal plan or, or open up the DVD package or, or log into the digital workouts. So there's a lot of content opportunities and copy. If you like helping people, if you want to help people achieve those dreams, that might be where you live. That could be emails and articles and all kinds of stuff, talking to people who've already made the sale. And your job as a writer is just to make sure that they actually use the product and get through to the other side, what that experience looks like. So there's so much on the copy content continuum, whether you're on the persuasive side of things, of having a conversation, priming somebody for a sale and just educating them, or you're on the persuasive side of things, which is actually getting them to buy. It's such a wide range and there's so many opportunities and every company needs all of it. So that's kind of what we want you to take away from this. And based on your money decisions, you're now gonna start looking at these through different lenses. So let's dig into just a couple of opportunities within each one. And again, there's so many, but on the sales side, on the persuasive side, the side where we're trying to get someone to, or persuasive side, actually trying to make the sale that, you know, most people think of sales letters. It's only one project. <laughs> it's so funny how many people, ADBI has been around for almost 25 years now. We are the company that trains copywriters. We have been for a while. This is, you know, the, the de facto gold standard. When you want to learn copy, you come to ADBI. We've been that for a while, but it's funny to me, that's ADY where I started with sales letters. And it's funny how many people still think that that's what the opportunity is. They come with this resistance of, but I don't wanna write sales letters. Nobody said you had to. <laughs> that was just one opportunity, one project. And the reality is that companies don't need a lot of sales letters. They only need a few. What they need are the dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of conversations that lead to sales letters, right? All of the articles, newsletters, social media, video, all the other stuff that drives people to the sales letter. So if you don't wanna write a sales letter, no problem, you don't have to. That's not even where the biggest opportunity is. It's the websites, it's the emails. These things are all part of the sales process and they're closer to the sales letter. They're linking directly to it. So it's a little more on the persuasive side of things, but it's still not the asking for the sale. Facebook posts, how-to videos, blog posts, e-newsletters, ads, postcards, catalogs, advertorials, all things that you can search on our website to learn more about and to see examples of, but these are all things on that persuade, on the persuasive side of things on the sales actually getting close to asking for the sale. 
On the flip side is the content side of the world, um, lead generation content, lead nurturing content. So same thing, right? White websites was on both sides. You could have website copy that brings people in, that attracts them, that there could be a solution, information on the problem that they're having, the research that they're doing to solve the problem. That's on the persuasive side of things. So websites are on both. White papers are very informational things typically done on high tech type products in the B2B space, explaining how something works, explaining the features of a product or service like a accounting software system. Email case studies are success stories. So people who have had an experience, the before and the after story. If you love that idea, if you're a journalist, great opportunity for you case studies. You're interviewing their most successful people and telling the story, the before and the after, how they benefited. Emails are on both sides. Some emails inform and educate. Other emails drive to the sale and say, if you're looking for this solution, here it is. And again, so many more other opportunities. And this is just barely scratching the surface on the content and copy side. And we cover the core of all of it. The one thing you need to take away from this is that it all starts with persuasion. It all starts with the fundamentals of good copy. Whether you're on the pre or the per side of persuasion, <laughs> whether you're on the copy or the content, it doesn't matter. There are core fundamental principles that apply to every single one of these pieces. And if you learn those, the rest is easy. Because when a client asks you, okay, I see that you write persuasive emails. These are so great, but can you also write a white paper? Yes, you understand the fundamentals of persuasion. Learning how to do a project, easy. We have templates and, and, and frameworks for all of that stuff at AWI. So you just say yes to the client after you've been through our fundamental stuff. If you've been through the AWI method and they ask you for any of this, you just say, yes, I can. I have time in my schedule three weeks from now, which because you're a very busy copywriter, you don't have time today and no client will ever expect you to turn around copy or content in 24 hours. You just say yes. And then you come to AWI, you say, help, a client wants to pay me this much money to do this project, but I've never done it before. And we say, no problem. If there is an opportunity or a project to make money as a writer, AWI has a program on it. 125 plus in our catalog and we will show you exactly which program will have you up and running on that project. Because again, you already have the core, you understand persuasion, learning how to write a project, all it is is following along with the steps of how to do that specific project. That's the easy part. All righty, so you can explore more about that. Uh, I said you can search the website for anything. Otherwise, a great resource is our catalog. Now it's, it's gonna link you off to all kinds of programs that we have, but there's not a better educational resource than our catalog, simply because the sales letters for every project type, so our program on writing case studies, 80% of that sales letter is research. It's helping you understand the opportunity. So use our catalog as a tool. What is this case study? That sounded cool to me. Go there, look up our case study program, read the sales letter, not to buy the program or maybe to buy it, but just to get the information. You'll get better research faster just by using our sales letters because our sales copywriters have already done all the heavy lifting for you rather than searching the quality of the content in our sales letters you can count on as accurate and up to date. So that's a great resource for you. All right, so now Pam, we got our money. We kind of know-ish what we want to write about. Why don't you tell us who we're actually going to write for? <laughs> okay, okay, so, so one of the big questions we get quite often is who's hiring writers? You know, who can I actually, who, who's the client? Who can I actually write for? So I want to show you some examples. Um, basically, I mean, this is just a basic B2B website, not basic, but this is one example of a B2B website. They do air conditioning and uh, other mechanical functions for companies, right? So it's a mid-size or it might be a global company, but the thing is every industry has small, medium, and large companies. They typically will have business to consumer or business to business, not always, but um, some that are super technical just for companies won't have a consumer side. That's, that's a given, but many of them do, like I said. And then you wanna think about what industry is that company in? So there might be um, financial, you know, the financial world is huge. It's, it's investment newsletters, it's banks, it's uh, things like um, Experian, you know, checking your credit score. And it's just a huge range of, of opportunities and companies that you could write for. And then we have the health, the health world. And that could be everything from medical practices to over the counter meds to anything to stay healthy, fitness, all that stuff. Software is another huge category. 
sports, wine. I mean, wine, hello. Uh, <laughs> there are so many categories. I mean, the other day I was looking for different niche industries and I found the barbecue world. There's this huge association for the barbecue world alone. Craft beer, uh, new moms, you know, craft uh, people who making crafts at home at the whole Etsy world. It's unbelievable how many different industries there are and every one of them has this whole machine going on. So the thing you wanna think about in choosing an industry that you would feel comfortable working in, um, there are two sides of the coin. So I advocate starting with a com an industry you know because the learning curve will be easier for you and who you're marketing to will be easier because you, it's very focused. So let's say you have a background in, um, Oh no, you're, you've been a teacher, but now you're a new mom and you're at home. So a market for you might be early childhood education and all the different kinds of online e-learning things, books, interactive toys, tons and tons of stuff in that world. Um, you might be a retiree, a new retiree who's going, okay, what does the rest of my life look like? What are some opportunities that are out there for retirees? And that might be an area. Um, if you have a kid in college, that's a whole different, world of consumer you're choosing which school and then what what do they need to have for the school books and supplies a little refrigerator in the dorm who knows it's a huge field in itself and then health conscious people that is if you're health conscious and you really follow um alternative health or or a certain like vegan lifestyle or something like that that's an industry if you're a baby boomer like me that's an industry because we're kind of balancing now just before retirement and or just getting into retirement, those kinds of things. Millennials are a whole different world and what are they doing? I mean, there are trends in the millennial world about home buying and, and holding off having children and pet. the pet world is huge for millennials. All kinds of things that are very specific to them. If you're a homeowner, what does that involve? Right In the past year where we've been staying at home and staying safe, the DIY or home renovation world has exploded because suddenly you're looking over there and going, I've always been bothered by that paint color. Finally, I'm going to change that paint color. You know, just things like that. So think about in your life, either your work background or your hobbies and interests, where, where would you feel like you could step on into a field and write for them? Talking about interests here, I talked about barbecue, but there are so many. I mean, it, just look inside your own world and your own personal inventory, I call it, as far as your work background, your interests, anything you're involved with with your family, like if you have kids in Little League or something like that. Um, if you're a part of a local book club, there are niches and markets and clients in every one of those worlds. We have... Um, uh, then you look at your, your experience, your professional experience, volunteer. I mean, these are a bunch of different jobs that could easily transfer over to being a copywriting expert in those fields. If you have a solar pa panel background, you, there's a whole solar industry, of course. So it's kind of easy once you think about your personal inventory and you don't have to pick something forever. And you also don't have to go with what you've been doing for a career. You can go with what you're interested in as a side hobby because there's an industry for it. So it's kind of open for you and, and that's really exciting. It could be overwhelming. Another option is to not pick an industry right now, but to go work for some marketing firms and agencies that need writers too. And we have free inside AWAI sessions on choosing a niche or working with ad agencies and marketing firms. And I highly recommend you check those out because it will help you understand those options. So this is the one on choosing a niche. I really recommend that you pick it, uh, take a look at it if you don't quite know. Well, gosh, I, I, you know, I've been in accounting for years, but boy, I don't want to do that anymore. I really like gardening. I'd, ra I'd rather write gardening stuff. This will help you decide and find where the clients are and see where the opportunities are. So please do make a note to check that out. All right, and then the other piece of it is who am I writing to and what am I offering them? So uh, Rebecca talked about the different kinds of projects you can pick from depending on your money goals or what you wanna write, kind of writing you wanna do. Let's just say you wanna be a blogger. 
you want to blog for yourself and you want to blog for companies as a guest blogger, ghost blogger. Like, for example, um, I work in the veterinary world as a freelancer, and I have over the years done blogging for different veterinary companies. They don't know how to blog. They hire me to blog on their behalf and I'm blogging in their voice. I don't get a byline. It's okay. They're paying me. So that's what's important. But most companies do not have someone in house who can do these things, but they have to be publishing content. So if you can get the skills that they need, that's where you step in and become a hero for them. So again, all those options you have, we have programs for them. You determine which skills you would like to offer for your specialties. Do I want to offer email copywriting as my specialty or lead generation for business companies, um, which would involve all kinds of things, video scripts, white papers, case studies, web pages. You need to build the skills just like any business that you're going to set up for yourself so that you can then offer those services with confidence and, and um, do a good job. So, you know, some of the skills take a little short time to learn. Some of them take a few months, but all of them are worth it. It's an investment in yourself and your future freedom from a job that you could be let go of or something like that. No, you're going to call the shots from now on, but you have to have those skills to be able to call the shots. So that's where you, again, you want to look at the catalog, see what interests you and go for something. We always recommend starting with our AWI method program. So that's the first bullet here. Um, it really is the foundation for anything you're going to write. And it shows you, it gives you a taste of trying different projects so that like a short sales letter, a landing page, a blog post, uh, an online ad. So you can get a flavor for what, what you are excited about. Cause you may say, Oh my gosh, I love sales letters. This is totally me. Or you may say, you know, I really like those little online ads that only have four lines. I can whip those out. So it really depends on what, what sparks your interest. And then if you want to get into B2B copywriting, there's a whole program there on the fundamentals of B2B. And then web copy, everything online. We also have a digital copywriter's handbook. But we really recommend that you start with the AWAI method because it's such a solid foundation on everything you need to know, no matter what you're writing. All right. And then so again, the catalog is a great place to explore all we offer. And then we also have writing prompts just to get your feet wet and try to think about the writing skill. Just just writing, just start writing and feel comfortable with it. We have 50 prompts that you can try. And that is the link there called writing prompts. We also have levels in our company where you can start as a total beginner and then just try something on for size. And then if you like it, you can do a self-study, more robust, in-depth training. Uh, then the next thing is something we call our companion series, where we have live scheduled sessions that bring that program, uh, bring a self-study program to life. So you can ask questions and engage, and we bring special guests and extra assignment opportunities and things like that. The next level is our certification programs, where you become a master at something such as um, SEO, search engine optimization, or um, I'm trying to think here, ah, case studies, white papers. We have a certain mastery level where you'll write an assignment, take a test, and then have a badge where you can say, I'm an expert at this. And you can charge really well for those certification level services. And then finally, we have live on-site immersion events our annual boot camp is coming up in October where everybody joins together and we, uh, the connections that are made there can change your life literally. And, uh, the, there's extra learning and, and, um, light bulb moments for you and, uh, boy, a peer groups that you can join together with. So that those are our levels pretty much through the company. If you're thinking about how all this works, think of this as our campus and you can choose which level 101, 102 onward. Um, to really help you grow and specialize and make the big bucks. <laughs> so that's what that's all about. Now, um, Rebecca's going to jump back in on the marketing part. Like, how do you get those clients? She's going to talk about that. All right. So we are on to step six. And if you guys have any questions about what kind of training we offer, what's right for you, we have this amazing member success team. You will never meet a nicer group, more informed, kind, generous people than our success team. They're awesome. And you can call them. They're available every single day from nine to five Eastern time. They're available over chat on our website and on email. 
reach out to them. They can help you get to the right program. Uh, but let's talk about marketing your services. So just like we put up the word sales and copy, a lot of people have an immediate resistance. So if you saw that slide and had that immediate resistance, don't worry, you're not alone. This is the piece that most people fear getting clients, putting yourself out there, marketing your services. But the reality is the reason that you feel that is just because you've never done it before. It can be, I promise, fun. You can actually get to love it, even if you are such an introvert. And the thought of talking to anybody terrifies you. There is a method that can help you. The reality is these companies need you. And it's more for you to decide who you want to write for and what you want to write about. And then when it's time and you have that focus, you'll reach out and say, hey, I have what you're looking for. Here's how I can help you. And that's all marketing is, is just connecting you, the solution, with the problem, which is the company needing to be in all of these marketing channels. Otherwise, they're leaving money on the table and not doing the business that they need to do. So the quick question is always, but how... What's the best marketing method? How do I find clients? And the best answer I've ever heard is from one of our success stories. His name was Joshua Boswell. He said, it's the one you're gonna do. So whatever one feels comfortable. We've identified 26 different ways of getting clients on our website. It doesn't matter what your comfort level is. You can do it just on LinkedIn. You can put up a website. Next question that typically comes up is, do I need a website? Yes, eventually you will need a website because imagine doing business with any professional service provider like an accountant or a lawyer who didn't have a website, right? But we can help. That stuff is super easy. Putting up your LinkedIn page, we have tutorials, step-by-step, step, super easy. You can do it through writing. If the thought of marketing yourself freaks you out, there are ways where you can just write and have clients come to you. We can show you how to do that. There's, of course, networking of connecting with people. But again, for us introverts, and you know what's funny? I actually am an introvert, even though I present not like an introvert. I truly am one. And the thought of networking to me Oh, like it just doesn't feel, Pam is an uber networker. She's super extrovert, <laughs> awesome with people. I fear that stuff. So the thought of writing and having people reach out to me who want my, my services feels much better to me. So we can show you how to do that. Blogging, lead generation, uh, doing videos or special reports that allow people to understand the services that you provide. There's so many more. So it's not about this, you have to be a certain kind of person. You have to be able to cold call now. You're gonna pick a way that works for you or two or three, and you're gonna put together a marketing machine for yourself based on the methods that feel good to you. And that's what we're gonna do. And we can show you no matter what path you pick, how to go about doing that. So our next slide. So here's a lot of resources. We cover this extensively on the 80 by website. Part of our methodology in the company or in the, in the training aspect is that we don't believe in just teaching you the skills. We also teach you the getting clients how to monetize those skills. So any program that you take from 80 by, from the 80 by method to any of our individual projects, so case studies, certifications, all of it, we always include how do you actually use the skill, take the skill that you just learned and make money from it. Again, like I said at the beginning, we talk about money a lot and that's why. You're here to make money doing it, so we wanna make sure every program has that money-making aspect in it. In the 80 by method, our core, it literally walks you through skill, 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 so the whole foundation of persuasion. It shows you how to apply those things to five different projects, how to turn those projects into samples that you can show potential clients, and then how to go out and actually do that. How do you send those samples out and get people to come to you? So even our most basic program, our foundation, that core, has the getting clients piece to it. So whatever you take from us, know that we're gonna cover this in detail, but there's tons of resources on our website, many insanity guys just like this. You'll find the link there as well as a whole bunch of other. We have over 30 different insight by webinars like this one. Our launch party, if you just want someone to tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this, to get up and going, we have it. Uh, we've got another one coming up soon. You can find information there. We get you up in five days. We start on Monday and by Friday, you are a professional writer out there, ready to make money. And the amount of people who have gotten clients in that period, it's overwhelming from that launch party. We walk you through so that it's not, there's no time to fear. There's no time to wonder what should I do? Am I doing it right? You don't have to worry about it. We just give you each little assignment and the assignment makes you move forward without even realizing that you're doing it. Even if you're not ready yet, you can get launched in five days. We have step-by-step -step programs. We've got free content and we have a job board. We have a job board called directresponsejobs.com. All of our members have access to it who have taken any of our skill-based skill programs. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
and it's actually being updated. We're, we're working on a behind the scenes update that's coming very soon, but there's usually anywhere between 350 to 450 projects, companies advertising on that job board for 80 by members. So that's a free resource as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know what's how to market. Important? <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry, somebody was asking me, what's step six again? And it's market. Market, market yourself. So we've got the skills, we've got the money, We've got the understanding of what paths we're going to pick. We are going to get the skills that we need because without skills, we have nothing to offer potential clients. We've now covered getting the potential clients. And again, we can dig deeper into that topic, but it depends on what methodology you want to use. Just go to our website. If you want to do LinkedIn, if you want to do a website, if you want to do writing, you'll find more information on that specific topic. So now we've got clients. Now we have clients coming to us. The next step is doing the projects. This one is actually, um, sometimes overwhelming for people like actually like, I got a client now what do I do <laughs> and then they come calling and we're like okay here's how we're gonna handle it so we've talked a lot about the projects that's our pricing guide it's available on our website we've talked about fees a little bit here's some extra insights just kind of into the kinds of fees that you can make but I see we're running out of time so let's go ahead and fire through this okay. but as a copywriter you're basically people if you're brand new you might be thinking but what do I actually do what do I actually send in I get a lot of questions do I have to know web design do I have to know graphic design do I all they're looking for is the content. They're looking for a Word doc with all the copy inside. They don't expect you to know anything about anything else. If you do, that can be a value add that you can put out there to say, hire me because I also have these skills, or you could do them either way and charge for them. That's an opportunity, but they don't expect that. They expect the copy to come in in a Word doc. Um, you can ease that review process. Like, is this what you were expecting? What comments do you have? By sending an email, we're gonna, we're gonna show you an example of this, explaining the approach. So. Here is my assignment that you asked me to do or the project you asked me to do. And here in the email are some notes of things that I want you to notice that I did intentionally. So that again, it just increases your value and kind of helps them understand that there's always a reason we do things in copy with intention. Something that you learn from the aided by method is how to identify the intention and apply the principles that we teach and that they're truly excited to see what you offer. They clients, a lot of times for aspiring writers or new writers, they feel that the relationship is adversarial between the clients and the writers, that you have to produce this amazing thing or they're gonna be disappointed, or there's like this conflict, but there's not. You are in such a collaborative team. Your client is excited and wants to participate. A really good marketer, a really good business owner is really connected to the end, to the results. And that's why copywriters make so much money because we are connected to the results. We don't just see it as just a blog post, just a content piece, just an article. No, we know that our clients are trying to ultimately sell something. And so we put that into everything that we say, every communication, and we teach you how to do this. But our clients who work with us know that we are in the boat with them. We're all focused on the end result. And so they're super excited to see what it is that you've come up with and what projects that you've, that you've submitted to them. So next slide. So things to remember when working with clients, there's always gonna be a learning curve. I wrote things I've been with in the industry almost 25 years. I've been with Eddie Guy almost 20 years. <laughs> and the things that I wrote back then are horrible today, but they were good enough back then, right? So there's gonna be a learning curve. You're always gonna get better. Your best is your best though. And it's likely a lot better than anything they could do on their own. So do your best, never send in half effort, always send in your best, best, best. Be a professional at every turn. You're a professional service provider. So you are a professional. The day, every communication, every thought, every word that you write, every email, every conversation, every Zoom meeting, anything, even if you're not physically wearing a blazer, I want you to think in your mind, that's the persona that I'm exuding. I am a professional. This is a professional conversation. Even though you're a human and they're a human and you're going to talk about personal things, you're in that mindset of still business. I run a business. So keeping that front of mind is important. Meeting your deadlines. Can't stress this enough. If you say that you're going to have a project due three weeks from Thursday, it better be done by Tuesday, no later than Thursday, right? Sending it in early is a good thing, but make sure that you have enough time. Now you're gonna learn your time. And let's say you thought it was gonna take you three weeks and oh my gosh, it's gonna take you more. You put in the time, do your best to get it in on time. And next time you'll know, I don't want to have to work until 11 o'clock at night. That wasn't, didn't feel good. So next time I'm going to give myself four weeks to do it. So just know there's a learning curve, but mean that deadline is key. You're going to learn from every single experience. So there's going to be feedback. There's going to be directions. There's going to be changes. I just need you to be flexible and look at everything as a learning opportunity. 
every conversation, every piece of feedback, take feedback from your clients. That's a good thing. The, again, you're in the boat together. You're both focused on the end game. So let's work together. Let's be collaborative instead of adversarial. They're not trying to critique you or put you down. They're trying to make sure that the final product is as awesome as you want it to be because the success is going to drive future business for you. So you want their input. And just remember, again, you're going to make some mistakes and that's okay. We don't learn from doing it right. We learn from doing it wrong. So just be okay with that and rest assured that with millions of potential clients that even if you screw up the first 10, you'll be fine. There's no blacklist. There's no list out there that says don't hire this person because there's nothing like that. The millions of companies don't talk to all of each other. Uh, So you will be fine. So just roll with it. So here's a quick sample email. It'll be in the playback, but this again is just showing um, how to submit a project and cover your intentions. This is a great value add, but again, so that they're not sending you back copy changes or content cr- comments that have nothing to do with or take you off the path of the intention. But this is a little bit, we cover this a lot in our training. Sorry, I'm flying through. I'm just conscious yeah, of the time. Okay, yeah. We put this together real quickly just to just to tell you that you're driving the car here. You're the professional. They don't know how to do this. So mm-hmm. to make sure that you know they know what they're looking at when you do send them copy, it's always helpful to explain what best practices you followed and why. And so that's, you know, we just whip this together. But again, you're going to have the slides available after this so you can look at this uh, in more detail. And clients love things like that. Anything where it looks like you have a process or you can layer in intentions. We're going to teach you at by so many ways that we do things. We have the four P's, the four U's. We come up with these acronyms and ways of remembering principles, but you can use it all. You can educate your clients in why you do what you do and how you do it and seem like this marketing genius because you're just because you've been through the training that really understands the method that gets copy and content to do what it needs to do. So you'll be actually using a lot of what we teach you to teach your clients. And again, increasing your value and making them want to work with you even more. So great resources for completing a project. Uh, One of my favorites is this first one, working effectively with clients. Uh, It's actually one of Pam Foster's project products, but the program takes you from intake. So how do I communicate with a client to make sure that I understand the scope of the project to make sure that it goes smoothly and then walks you through those feedback loops and things. So if you feel just nervous and not even understanding what that might look like, it's a great program just to kind of give you that guideline. We have essential business templates, every kind of template. People ask about invoices and proposals and schedules and all the stuff there we we created a list or a a collection of 14 templates that you can just customize for yourself you have our permission to use our copyrighted materials as your own put your own header put your own company name your own address all of it and i recommend actually just a little insight tip that we got from one of our success stories elizabeth blessing she took the invoice template right out of the gate and wrote it out as though it was real like what was her first project going to be and how much was it going to be and sat there with the invoice to feel what it would feel like to send that out and from there, things moved rather quickly because she was already in that that place of being a professional, having these templates and seeing what it felt like to put out a $5,000 invoice. That's super tons- cool. I haven't heard that. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Yeah. Cool. Tons okay. of content on our website. So then we get paid. How do you get paid? This is a question <laughs> that comes up a lot. We've done the project. Now we need to get money. Mm-hmm. So you submit your final draft. And there's the, the templates product that I was talking about. Thank the client for the project. Attach, let them know you'll be sending along an invoice. Always remember, this is a professional. Here you go. Here's the blog assignment that you asked for. This was a pleasure working with you. An invoice will be following. So you'll submit your invoice. And there are tons of invoicing uh, uh, software you know, programs that you can use. But you can literally just send an email and say, or you can use our templates. Just say, blog post, $200. Here's my invoice. Here's how you pay me, which continue on. So how do you actually get paid? It's going to depend on your client, where they're located. If you are in London, for example, a check might not be the most uh, feasible, or maybe you prefer PayPal. Most will be able to do check or PayPal. Some will also offer direct deposit or wire transfer. You're just going to talk to your client. How do you prefer to be paid? If you're using PayPal and then knowing that they will take fees out, you might even be thinking about that on pricing. I want to use PayPal because of the ease, but I'm going to up my fees 20%. 10%, whatever the the cost is to offset that. Or you can even put that to the client. If you pay by check, it's like this, or via PayPal, it's like that. But really, you'll just collect your paychecks that way. And then make sure you close it out. We've got our money. 
always pitch what's next. If you want to work with this client again, you never want to say, thank you so much. I'll be waiting for you whenever you need me. No, you say, this was amazing. Here's five more ideas I have for you, right? Ask them, put up some ideas, ask them for a testimony. If it was a good thing, did you like this project? Can I use this comment as a testimony on my website? And then follow up. The best time to ask the next sale is when someone is excited about you. So use the opportunity and don't wait for them to ask you. Ask them, not just for more work, but literally go in with three to five ideas. If you wrote a blog post, here's five more blog post topics. Which one do you want me to write next? How easy is that for the client to say yes? We did this landing page, client A. Let me go ahead and write the ads that are gonna drive traffic to it and the emails that are gonna follow. Here's my idea for that, right? How easy is it? Just make it easy for the client to say yes. They're already happy with your work. So why not just give them the next step and say, yes, go ahead and do that, please. And then we are not tax or legal professionals. Uh, everybody's situation is so different. So if there are any questions on, should I form an LLC? What's my tax structure? Da -da 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 -da. Your situation is different than everybody else's. So ask an accountant about taxes, business structure, how to keep records, what expenses are deductible, all of that stuff. At the same time, know that those can become things that stop you from moving forward. Entrepreneurs, business owners, they jump in, they get started, and nothing is going to light a fire under your butt more than a paying client, right? You get your first check, hey accountant, what do I do with it? Now I can pay you for these skills. So don't feel like you have to go through all of this stuff before you get started. You can get started, start making money, and then figure out now you have income to pay for professional services to make sure that you aren't losing money and that you're setting yourself up to operate in a way that makes sense for you. There's a whole bunch of resources on our website. So there's our pricing guide. We have this great guide on pricing and negotiating fees. It's one of those, those training programs that's available when you need it. So if you are stuck on pricing, someone offers you a project and you say, I don't even know how to approach this, go grab that training. And Elise Bennon, who's our resident uh, coach on business building, will walk you through pricing. She'll walk you through how to understand the scope, how to name a price, how to deal with challenging of, of if you're off on pricing with your client, if they change the scope of the project and raise it, how to raise your fees accordingly to make sure that you're covering the new scope. It's all included. Really what you should take away from this slide is whatever you need, whatever problem you have, whatever solution you need, whatever opportunity presents itself, we can help you. We have a program, we have an article, we have a training, we have something, we have a team of people here ready to help you through this. Don't let any of these become roadblocks for you in moving forward. And finally, step nine, <laughs> celebrate and repeat. This is a big one. I know it seems like a fluff throwaway, but man, celebrate. If you're in any of our groups, the launch party, if you're in any of our um, ADY by Copywriting Insiders, we have all these great social groups. It's so much fun to see, like, I just got my first client, just got my seventh client, just raised my fees, just increased the scope of this project. It's so much fun. So take a moment. No win is too small. Your first win is your first win. So don't look at it and say, oh, but their win is bigger. It doesn't matter, it's your first win. I want you to celebrate and scream and dance and get excited because those are the moments that are gonna move you forward. Those, and if you need people to celebrate, if you don't have people in your life who are willing to be like, woohoo, you did it, call us. We love to celebrate. We are a celebrating company through and through. We literally have a newsletter that's written by Melissa Everett. She'll, you'll see her in our social media group. She's probably in the Q&A right now. She puts together a newsletter for our internal company, for the employees of AWI, to show us all the success stories for the week so that we can celebrate on their behalf as well. But this is a life lesson. Every win that you have, your first client, your first project, the first time you raise your, you raise your fees, frame your, you take a picture of your check, everything. The more you can celebrate, the more you can fill yourself with that enthusiasm and excitement and passion, that's what's gonna drive you through. That's what's gonna move you forward to that ultimate goal that we've written down and pasted on our wall. That's what's gonna be the thing that makes this all worthwhile, that gives you the momentum and the fulfillment that you want because this is big and it's real and you're doing this for yourself. You are taking control and creating a life for yourself that meets your needs, your money, your living situation. Take care of your kids, take care of your elderly parents, live where you want, live in some remote place in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you can really create the life that you want from this and each little step along the way deserves to be celebrated. You deserve to be celebrated for even taking the time today. Celebrate this. I went through this entire roadmap I have a plan, I'm gonna do this. I took an hour out of my time today to invest in myself. Celebrate that. The more you can celebrate, the better. 
And we look forward to celebrating with you every step of the way. So make sure that you share your success as well. All right, Pam, take us home. <laughs> okay. Now, you do need to invest in yourself. You do need to get the skills, but you don't need to make this a big production. It's not an MBA that takes two years. It's not like uh, any kind of degree that takes forever. And then you can only, like Rebecca said, you don't have to wait to get clients. But so these are the things you don't need. You don't need a big budget for your learning. You can start small and build your way up to specializing. You don't need an expensive office. I am in a little corner of my living room <laughs> with a little little uh, laptop stand that I'm working from. That's all I need. Um, you don't need office equipment. Um, you don't need much really at all. You don't need a college degree, that's for sure. You need to just learn how to write copy that works. That's all you need. Clients won't care what your college degree background is or anything like that if you can write copy that helps them bring in sales. And then no experience, no problem, no prior training, no problem because that's why we're here. So what you do need is just an attitude to learn, go through each step. We're always learning. I've been doing this for 400 years and I'm always learning because things keep changing online. And uh, the way that marketers are, are reaching people now, it, it has changed so much over the years. So you got to keep on top of it, but it's really fun if you love this and you're making good money at it. So I really encourage you to make decisions based on what you've seen today and then decide how you're going to invest in yourself, in your freedom and your life. Um, which path do you want to take? Because there are lots of choices. They're all here for you to pick from. And then learn the skills, set up your business, start with baby steps. It's, it's quite fine to just start, okay, I'm just going to do a LinkedIn profile. That's it for now. Beautiful. That's all you need to start with. And then just keep going and growing as you really get immersed into this. You're going to find a whole family of fellow writers, experts, us, and tools and tips and inspiration that will just keep you growing as so many of our members have. So that's really what to do next. It's, it's go through the steps again if you want to. Write down your own personal plans and go for it. So with that, we, we really hope that you will consider going through the AWAI method because it, it really is that core for everything you're going to learn. Plus it has hands-on hands -on assignments that some of them you'll get feedback on. So you have total confidence when you're done that you really get this. Um, it also has, uh, you, you'll have a portfolio of samples at the end, a variety of writing samples. And then, at, like Rebecca said, at the end, we have an entire section on getting clients. So uh, that program, again, <laughs> we just wanted to show you this fun graphic because we've already had people raving about it. Um, uh, the approach that it teaches, the uh, I love that I'm no longer uh, feel like I'm on an island alone. No, because the cool thing is with any of our programs, you're part of a family now. You have access to our social com communities and we are there for you 24 seven. And you'll find that fellow members are too. And you form buddy groups and it becomes your life. And it's a great life. And then on the left, I, I love thanks to AWAI, I landed my first client today. Congratulations to me. <laughs> so this could be you and we see it every day. So we're not just making it up. This is real. And I, I think I, that's an important thing to note though. Cause I do think that again, a misconception is that writers are super competitive in this industry and we're all fighting over the scraps or but it's not like that. Millions of companies. One of our experts actually reached out to his clients recently and said, how much competition do I have? And the client said, I maybe get one call a year of people yeah. who are actually looking to service me to serve, to <laughs> to write copy or content for me like this community of people they're so supportive and uplifting you've got people in our communities that are steps ahead of you whether it's 30 days ahead of you 3 years 30 years and they're all just pulling you forward and soon you're going to be moving forward and you'll be reaching back and pulling up the next group it's the nicest right. community of people writers or otherwise that I've ever been a part of it just even if you're just in there and immersing yourself and, and involving engaging with people who are doing it there's so much to be said for that as well of proving to yourself that this opportunity is real it's it's real for you you can do this and just being around that is that sometimes can be that last piece of proof that you need that you can do this and that's really exciting and if you ever want inspiration too, uh, go on our website and just look up the case studies. 
you'll find people from all walks of life and backgrounds and, and, and they'll tell you exactly how they made the leap and how they're doing. And it's pretty exciting. I think it's very inspiring because something might spark a personal note for you in that. And you can you know, make that connection for how you could have this life too. Um, let us help you if there's anything we can do. You, you're on our social um, communities right now. Reach out. We have people who moderate all the time and are happy to help you. And sometimes our members help before we can even get to it. It's that kind of community. So um, honestly, I, I really hope you'll become part of this family and live the life you want. That's what we're all trying to do here. So with that, we're going to open the floor for a couple of questions. I know that our team's been feverishly I answering. Heard, I actually just spoke to the team, and I think that they are good to go, Fran. Have we answered all of the questions in the comments? What? That's exactly Exactly what we're going to say, Rebecca. Helen and Melissa have been doing an awesome job. And like you're saying, our members are just answering each other's questions. So I you are good to go. Thank you guys. Thank That's you guys awesome. so much. So if you have other questions after this, by all means, post them here, post them in our, our social groups, reach out to our member success team, reach out to us. We love this so much. We love this world. We love this community. We love helping and teaching and training. If there's a question you have, I can guarantee you we have the answer. If there's a project you want to take on, we got the program. If there's a, an expert or a, a resource that you need or an opportunity you need to take advantage of, we can help you. All we need to know is what you need. And we are here and willing and exciting, excited to help you do this for yourself. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Pam, for joining me as well. Pleasure. And with that, we're going to send you guys off. So if you have any questions, reach out. Otherwise, we look forward to hearing your success story very soon. Bye, everyone.